All right, so so far what we have learned is that the adipose tissue is a specialized connective tissue. It is a specialized connective tissue. Um, and we know what connective tissue contains. Um, it contains what? ECM and connective tissue cells, right? And because it's specialized, that it also contains something else, right? And what it contains is the major predominant component of adipose tissue. And that is a specialized cells called adipocytes okay adipocytes so adipocytes are present inside the adipose tissue among connective tissue components which will be the ecm and the cells and we discussed this function and the function of adipose tissue is insulation um, cushioning and also triglyceride storage well what are triglycerides we studied them earlier triglycerides are uh, large molecules that are made up of fatty acids and Glycerol and these can be broken down to release fatty acids and these contain energy now the reason why they are suitable for for storage is because these are insoluble water insoluble so we can say that these are uh, non osmotic so inside the storage cells inside the adipose tissue they do not pull the water towards them these are non osmotic so they can be easily uh, and comfortably stored uh, another component of triglyceride or another feature of triglyceride is that uh, triglycerides have a high caloric density. High caloric density. Which means per gram of triglycerides that are burnt for energy, they, they release more energy than, uh, for example, glucose or protein. So um, essentially what I'm saying is that they can, they can release 9, 9 to 9.3 Let's write 9.3 kilocalories of energy per gram as compared to maybe glucose, which would be around 4 to 4.5, uh, or proteins, uh, which would be around 4.5. So proteins can, can release 4.5 kilocalories per gram. Glucose releases uh, around 4.5 kilocalories per gram, but triglycerides can release almost twice the amount of energy uh, of uh, glucose and proteins. <clears throat> uh, so basically, adipose tissue is a specialized connective tissue that contains adipocytes and uh, connective tissue components, and it stores triglycerides, right? And there's two types of adipose tissue, because there's two types of adipocytes. And these are, number one, white adipocytes, and therefore white adipose tissue, right? And then we also have a brown adipose tissue and brown adipocytes. Uh, so let's just start with the white adipose tissue first and then we'll come towards the brown adipose tissue. All right, so we have made this huge fuss about the adipose tissue containing adipocytes and that adipocytes combining to form two different kinds of adipose tissue, the white adipose tissue and the brown adipose tissue. Uh, made up of the white and brown adipocytes. Now, the question arises as to where these adipocytes come from. Uh, what is the origin of adipocytes? Well, what do you think is the origin of the adipocytes? The adipocytes come from where most cells in our body come from. They come from stem cells in the in the embryo, right? So. Inside the embryo, what happens is that uh, we have three different layers in the developing embryo. One of them, one of those layers is called the mesoderm, okay? So the mesoderm is one of the layers of the embryo. And what the mesoderm contains is stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, let's call them MSCs. Uh, so mesenchymal stem cells. And these are able to not only divide, but differentiate into many different kinds of cells and uh, one of the types of cells that they differentiate into are called pre sites. okay so mesoderm has mesenchymal stem cells that uh, differentiate into pre sites, and then these pre sites go on and not only differentiate but also proliferate into adipocytes and they make up two different kinds of adipose tissue so white and brown adipose tissue made up of white and brown adipocytes okay now let's study the white adipose tissue first the white adipose tissue is obviously made up of white adipocytes 
what are white adipocytes? How do they look? What function do they uh, perform? Well, the white adipocytes are shown in this microscopic slide image just present below. Uh, the white adipocytes are large single cavity containing cells that have multiple faces, right? So these have multiple faces and these have a large single cavity. These are large white cells that contain uh, one large single cavity. So we can say a single cavity, right? And what it also contain is multiple faces. Right? These are polyhedral, so multiple faces, obviously. Um, I taught you this before, is the word that is used for multiple faces is polyhedral. So multiple or multiple faceted, polyhedral. And single cavity, uh, you can also call it unilocular cells. So unilocular cells. Uh, because they have uni would stand for one, and locule is basically a large cavity. And so unilocular cells would also uh, uh, be signified as a single cavity containing cells and then these are also polyhedral so th these are the features of adipocytes these are polyhedral and they are unilocular as compared to something like the brown adipocytes that we are going to we are going to uh, study later so i want you to remember this feature is that they are unilocular and these are polyhedral unilocular means they have uni one locular cavity they have a single large cavity as compared to something like the brown adipocytes that we'll study in just a bit uh, and they contain they are multilocular so multilocular would mean they have multiple cavities right okay these are polyhedral cells and these are unilocular these are polyhedral in tissue so let me just write that down so this is a tissue slide right this is not an individual cell this is present in the tissue we take a piece of tissue put it under microscope slide and we observe that it is polyhedral and it is uh unilocular uh, cells containing tissue right um but if this was isolated right just one adipocyte was isolated then it would be spherical it would look something like this it would still be unilocular of course but it would be spherical if isolated. Um, and on the outside of these cells, you can clearly uh, see stained in pink is the, let me change the pen color, stained in pink is the connective tissue outside the adipose, uh, adipocytes. So outside the adipocytes, we have connective tissue, which is stained in pink because connective tissue contains collagen and collagen stains pink right so the connective tissue on the outside which contains obviously the ecm uh plus uh, ecm contains uh plus connective tissue cells which you might see in the microscopic slide we have done this in the previous chapter and it contains uh white adipocytes because we're doing white adipose tissue so white adipocytes sites Another histological feature of these cells is that they have a very thin nucleus that is pushed to the side, pushed to the cell surface membrane. So they have a very thin nucleus that is pushed to the cell surface membrane. I'm going to color this in blue. So we have a thin nucleus here, we have another one here, another one here. And so we it is a thin nucleus that is pushed towards the CSM. So you could say that it's an eccentric thin nucleus pushed towards the uh, cell surface membrane. So thin nucleus near cell surface membrane and these are the three features of the white adipocytes so they have a thin nucleus near csm they are unilocular and these are polyhedral right and these are the features of uh, white adipocytes and these appear like this very uh, whitish uh, surrounded by a pinkish uh, lamina and uh, what they contain is uh, a single large cavity and a very thin nucleus and these are polyhedral cells and tissue these can be spherical when isolated and then on the outside they contain uh, the connective tissue that contains obviously the ecm and the cells of the connective tissue uh, but we have covered that in the previous chapter all right uh, so groups and groups of these cells together with the connective tissue elements which would be the ecm and the cells Many groups of these cells and the connective tissue elements form the specialized connective tissue, which is called the white adipose tissue. So we have white adipocytes that are unilocular, polyhedral, and have a thin nucleus, and together with the connective tissue elements, they form the specialized connective tissue that is called the white adipose tissue, right? 
so this white adipose tissue then that then uh, serves the functions that we discussed earlier. So we have uh, uh, subcutaneous fat, we have the visceral adipose tissue, and it serves the function of cushioning, it serves the function of uh, insulation, and most importantly, it serves the function of triglyceride storage. So the triglycerides uh, are stored inside the unilocule, or basically the, the large single cavity of this uh, of these uh, cells. Uh, now, a feature of uh, the white adipose tissue or basically the adipose tissue is that these are hormone sensitive. Uh, so the stored triglycerides can also be released from these uh, adipo, uh, adipose sites and adipose tissue. And uh, the way that happens is, for example, uh, if we want them released, then uh, it can happen through different hormones in the body. You studied this in physiology, but I'm just mentioning this here, is that we have different hormones. For example, we have, we have uh, growth hormone, or we have adrenaline, which is, uh, let's say, nor, uh, epi, nephrine, nor adrenaline, right? Nor epinephrine. Uh, these cause the release of uh, triglycerides. And then uh, synthesis of triglycerides or storage. Uh, for that, we have another hormone, which is insulin, right? So insulin results in storage of more triglycerides into the adipocytes while their release is triggered by growth hormone, norepinephrine, among uh, other uh, hormones. Uh, the release is usually through the activation of another uh, enzyme that is present inside the, inside the adipocytes. This is called hormone sensitive lipase you study this in physiology but this hormone sensitive lipase uh, is activated by growth hormone and norepinephrine and then uh, what it does is it breaks down the triglycerides that are stored inside the uh, white adipocytes and then these are broken down into fatty acids and uh, glycerol and transported into blood okay that's how the function works and that's pretty much it for the white adipocytes now let's go on to some clinical correlates uh, but before we begin i would like to go over the neat notes and see uh, what we have learned so far all right so basically we started with the introduction of the adipose tissue we said that it is a specialized type of connective tissue right it is a specialized connective tissue which is which was predominated basically the major type of cell type that is present inside the uh this specialized connective tissue were the adipocytes and uh, these adipocytes were surrounded by connective tissue elements basically collagen and ecm uh, and all of those connective tissue associated things that we learned in the previous chapter and uh, among other functions like heat insulation and cushioning, these were also uh, used for triglyceride storage. So adipose tissue is used for triglyceride storage. Uh, we studied that triglyceride molecules are non-osmotic and have a high caloric density and therefore they're good for storing. Uh, we studied that it is sensitive to hormones such as uh, insulin, norepinephrine, growth hormone. And we studied that it has two types of connect, uh, adipose tissue. We studied the basics of white adipose tissue. Um, I'm going to highlight the histology of it. So we studied three important components. We said that the cells had a, had a really large single cavity. Basically cells appear white and hollow. So they have a, they're called unilocular cells because they have a single large cavity. They had a, an eccentric thin nucleus and they were polyhedral. So it's three uh, important histological characteristics of uh, adipose sites, white adipose sites. Uh, we studied the storage and mobilization, how chylomicrons, lipoproteins, where they come from, how they're broken down, stored, and then uh, re released again by different hormones like growth hormone and norepinephrine. Now, here's uh, another thing that I haven't actually taught you, but basically, adipocytes can also produce leptin. Okay, and leptin is also referred to as a starvation hormone. So, what it does is that um, it basically decreases the appetite. It decreases the appetite because this hormone, when it is produced by the adipose tissue, it goes into the into the appetite center and the satiety center. We have a satiety center in the hypothalamus, and it is targeted by this leptin, um, and it increases both insulin activity for more lipid storage and targets the hypothalamus to decrease appetite. Targets the satiety center and the and the appetite centers. Uh, you study more about those centers in physiology. 
All right, here's some clinical correlates to the, uh, to the adipose tissue chapter. So if there's a tumor that is benign of the unilocular cells, the white adipose tissue cells, the white adipocytes, which are unilocular, then it is called the lipoma. If there is a malignant tumor, and not a benign one, a malignant tumor of unilocular white adipocytes, unilocular cells, then they are called, uh, it's called liposarcoma. Okay, it's quite rare, but it's called a liposarcoma if it's a malignant tumor. If it's a benign tumor, then it's called a lipoma. Uh, leave this one out for now. Uh, and then we have obesity. Obesity is basically the, uh, the phenomenon of being uh, having more than uh, normal uh, adipose tissue in the body. So in children, it is found um, and, and formed by hyperplasia which is basically hyperplasia of the adipocytes. Hyperplasia basically means newer cells being formed and increase in cell size of the existing cells as well. Hyperplasia would mean newer cells being formed, but in adults, we have hypertrophy, which basically means increase in the cell size only. So size increases, cells get larger, so the tissue gets larger, but there's no newer cells being formed in hypertrophy. But in hyperplasia, we have newer cells being formed in children. Uh, and they, basically it increases both the subcutaneous and visceral fat. Now, if the visceral fat is increased, the visceral adipose tissue inc is increased, which is present around the organs, then there is more risk of uh, different diseases, especially cardiovascular diseases, okay? Cardiovascular diseases are the most deadly diseases in the US at the moment. Um, there is more number of deaths associated with cardiovascular diseases than with any other uh, disease. Um, but, uh, and it can result from an increase in visceral fat, it, it results from obesity. Um, but it does not result from an increase of subcutaneous fat, okay? <clears throat> if subcutaneous fat is increasing, person is getting fatter from the fat that is present under the skin, then uh, that obesity does not usually associate with that many diseases as compared to if there's an increase in the visceral fat, in the fat around the organs. All right, so that was the white adipose tissue. There is another adipose tissue that I talked about, the brown adipose tissue. Uh, but before beginning the brown adipose tissue, I want to go over some more slide images and some more basically image examples of white adipose tissue because I want you guys to be uh, very good at recognizing the adipose tissue because once we are going to start the uh, more advanced chapters, there will be more images and in those images, if they show you a section of adipose tissue, then you should be able to immediately uh, recognize that okay this is the adipose tissue right because it has those three elements of the adipose tissue that we discussed earlier um, so uh, I'm going to take this uh, screen to the uh, this example right here so we have this example right here now immediately looking at it you should be able to uh, derive that this is an example slide of white adipose tissue because it contains those three elements. What are those three elements? Well, number one, it has a large central cavity, right? So it's unilocular. Uh, so let's just write that down, unilocular, right? Um, also, it contains on the sides some connective tissue elements that are being stained pink. So it is part of the connective tissue, but it has these large cells that are unilocular. Um, another thing that it contains is Whereas the nucleus pushed to the side. It has a very small, thin nucleus pushed to the side, right? So we have many different cells over here whose nucleus is being pushed to the cell surface membrane, right? And last but not least, these cells in tissue, these are polyhedral, right? So, and we can uh, almost obviously see that these cells have multiple faces. So for example, over here, we see that this, this cell has these spaces right here, and then we have the nucleus right here. Similarly, this cell right here has these faces. So it is multiple faceted, it is polyhedral. Unilocular, nucleus pushed to the side, and polyhedral. So that's white adipose tissue. I have another image right here. Well, in this image as well, we can clearly see some polyhedral cells that are unilocular and they have a nucleus that is pushed to the 
to the side. So in this photo, let's come back to this one. Uh, in this photo, we have two other tissues. We have a tissue here and we have a tissue right here. Okay, this is a tissue and this is a tissue. But immediately when you see the slide, you, you can differentiate that this is not an adipose tissue. This one right here is not an adipose tissue. The adipose tissue is right here in the in the middle, right? And that's uh, basically what I want you to learn is to be able to recognize where the adipose tissue is or very different kinds of tissues are as we uh, learn them in this in these uh, series of lectures. Okay.